Nintendo may have patched out all of the dupe glitches we were using to sell like 20 diamonds in 40 seconds, but all is not lost, as I found a way to collect a huge amount of rupees quickly and easily, no glitches required. This is a true and honest way to farm tons of rupees here in Tears of the Kingdom, and it can never be taken away from us with a patch. If you follow this video, you'll be walking away with well over 4,000 rupees in a single sitting. Best of all, the route we are about to follow is repeatable. Let's not waste any more time and get right into it. This route can be completed at any time during your playthrough. However, you'll finish it a lot quicker if you have some powerful weapons at your disposal. And you're gonna want Mineru active for the first part here. To begin, warp to the Sona Pan Shrine, which can be found right here. The shrine is located in front of this forest, which contains a jaw-dropping amount of apples. If you want to get paid, you're going to have to pick up each and every one of these apples. Like I mentioned earlier, you could use the additional height Mineru gives you to pick higher up apples without having to climb the trees or knock them over. It speeds up the process a bit, but of course this is just optional. It took me about six minutes to pick each and every single apple from this forest, and my total apple count at the end was 144. 144 apples, good God, how does Link fit this in his pocket? We need these apples because we are going to do a whole lot of cooking and a whole lot of selling. Cooking five apples gives you a simmered fruit meal that is worth 27 rupees. With 144 apples in our pocket, Let's do some quick math. We can cook 28 simmered fruit meals and selling each at 27 rupees will net us an incredible 756 rupees total, all from picking some apples for five minutes. However, we are gonna save the cooking and selling of these simmered fruit meals for the end. Let's head to the next section of our route first. I'll explain the entire logic behind my route at the end of the video. We are next going to go to this spot here at the northeastern tip of the map. At this spot, a stone talus mini boss will spawn. It has a rare ore deposit on its back. It looks a bit different from the normal ore deposits. It has little gold spots, and that means it's more likely to drop the more valuable gems. As you can see, these boss fights are incredibly easy and they drop a ton of valuable gems. Here's a summary of what the first rare stone talus boss dropped. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing three more times. Rare stone talus number two can be found at this spot here. Once again, the fight is easy, and it will drop a bunch of valuable gems when defeated. Here's a summary of what the second one dropped. Rare Stone Talus number three could be found at this spot here inside of the cave.
another easy fight. Here's a summary of the drops for this one. And finally, we have Rare Stone Talus number 4. The ore on its back is in a bit of an awkward spot, but it's still a fairly easy fight overall, as long as you keep moving and avoid its attacks. Amazingly, this one dropped two diamonds, so I pretty much made a killing on this fight. Here's a summary of the drops from number four. And with that, we are done with our rupee farming grind. If you could even call it a grind, we picked a bunch of apples and destroyed four super easy bosses. It really is as simple as that. Here's a grand summary of everything we did today and according to my raw recording, it only took me about 25 minutes to complete. With all these gems and apples in hand, we can now head to Goron City to sell them. I say Goron City in particular because there is a Gerudo lady we could find here that will buy gems off you at a higher rate than normal. If you manage to pick up enough gems to satisfy her request, absolutely sell to her for an extra bonus. However, for the sake of my math today, I'm assuming you're just going to sell to a regular vendor for the regular prices. At this point, you could cook all of your apples into those simmered fruit meals. Remember, you have to cook five apples per meal to get the full value that we are looking for. Now, the reason we are saving this cooking until the end is because we have time to kill after defeating all of the bosses. In order to repeat this entire process, we need to get a Blood Moon, which will cause these Stone Talus mini bosses to respawn. Also, we want those apples to respawn in the forest beside the Sonapan Shrine. However, apple respawns act a bit differently. Unfortunately, the way apples and many other materials respawn in Tears of the Kingdom is entirely random. You just have to wait a random amount of time in an area that is not the area where you picked up the materials, and eventually they will come back. That time could be a couple of minutes or an hour. So as my own personal rule, I just decided to perform this rupee farming method once every time I get a blood moon. Usually by the time the next blood moon appears, the apples have all respawned as well. And I could do the entire loop again, picking all the apples up and taking out the four rare stone talus bosses. So how long until a blood moon takes place and you could perform this method again? Well, Blood Moons occur once every 2 hours and 48 minutes of gameplay time, which means exactly 7 days have passed in-game. You can't be in a menu or else the timer does not move. I usually kill time between Blood Moons by just playing the game, doing some side adventures, shrines, looking for materials to upgrade my gear, the list goes on. This world is massive and you should really have no trouble finding something else to do while waiting. But if you want to go idle, you can just chill out in a spring in Goron City and let the time pass while you do something else. Before you know it, that Blood Moon will spawn and you can repeat this rupee farming process once again. Let's end by summarizing the entire route into a neat graphic. Here are all the numbers from just one of my run throughs with this route. Remember, it won't be exactly the same for you. The gems that drop when you defeat these bosses are random. You might get worse drops than I did, but you might get better than I did. Assuming terrible luck, you would still make out with something in the ballpark 
of 2,364 rupees, which isn't bad at all given the time investment. Best case scenario, imagine 5,304 rupees. Hey, if the RNG gods are on your side, it could happen. Finally, we factor in our apples. In the end, after selling all my gems and all my simmered fruit meals, I ended up with 4,183 rupees when performing this loop the first time over the course of only 30 minutes. Just for simplicity, here's what the loop looks like. I plan to do it again and again every time a blood moon appears. It's super quick and super easy, and I can officially say I don't think I'll be worrying about rupees ever again in this game, even with the dupe glitches being patched out. And that's gonna wrap it up for today's video. With this strategy in mind, you shouldn't have to worry much about rupees anymore going forward. If you like this video and wanna see more Tears of the Kingdom guides and content, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Next time around, I'll outline how to get the froggy armor, which allows you to climb up slippery surfaces. It's possibly the most helpful armor in the entire game. I'm saying it right now. I'll also outline the exact locations for every material necessary to upgrade the full froggy armor at a great fairy fountain. And you guessed it, upgrading requires paying a bunch of rupees. How lucky you are watching this video first. Anyways, that's all for today. So until next time, thanks so much for watching everyone. And take care.